Um, my name is Nina Ocharek, and I am an objects conservator. I just started working here at the UK Museum to um, help prepare the objects for the Maya exhibition. And right now, I am working on this sensor. It's got a spider monkey. It's called a spider monkey decoration on it. Do you know the name of a spider monkey? The spider monkey may be connected to cacao because spider monkeys often rated cacao trees. Mm -hmm. So the iconography might not relate. And the spines all over that pot from tree. are from the Seba tree, which yeah. the Maya saw as the symbol of the tree of life. And this sensor was previously restored. Um, the foot along the bottom was broken into five or six pieces in large sections and it was adhered probably with an nitrocellulose adhesive which is um, it's it's an adhesive that over time is very strong and over time it starts to shrink and peel back from the ceramics and a lot of these ceramics for the, this exhibition were were put together with that adhesive and it was done such a long time ago that the adhesive is reaching the end of its useful life. The joints were fairly fairly well aligned and still stable, but I could see the adhesive starting to peel back from the edges, which is one of the first signs that it's getting ready to go. So I injected a little bit of B72, which is an acrylic adhesive um, that we use a lot in conservation for its long-term stability uh, working properties. The other thing with this, with the sensor, is that from here to here, maybe about half a circumference um, from the foot to the lip is a plaster restoration. And that was done back when the pot was originally treated. Um, and they got the shape fairly nicely, but they also, they painted it a very flat, black, black color. And so in, you can see some on the interior, and I can turn it a little bit for you to, let's see, this the best way, so that you can see, um, I can't point while I'm holding it, but you can see how one side is, is sort of a mottled grayish color and the other is a very flat black paint, and that's how it looked on the exterior also all the way around. Um, and. It doesn't look very good. It doesn't. You, when you look at the object, instead of seeing the object, you see the fill. You see the restoration. You see this matte black paint. And our goal is to have you look at the object so that you can then learn about it, enjoy it, see it for what it is. When you get up close, you can see my handiwork clearly. But when you stand back from it, you enjoy it as a whole. Um, so I've already done quite a bit from. You can see here the arm is restoration, this leg is restoration, and then there's a line that goes around here. So I'll, I'll draw it out with my finger. Do, 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 do. Along there. And then this piece here is a restoration. Um, and then everything from the side around. And I've already done a lot of work here, and you can see I've done less work here. And, <laughs> and on the inside you can see I haven't really done much. And with the that sort of pale yellow what I'm doing is is killing the black a little bit. So, because if you try to make it brown on top of black, you still have this muddy black dark color. So I'm just giving it a lighter ground to then speckle in some of the dark and light. I made it a little bit more cleaning with deionized water. I did quite a bit of cleaning on some of these other objects. These shirts here, um, they were also like just sooty, dirty, city kind of grime. So these, these need more, more clean, but here there's a more fragile paint surface, and so instead of using just plain water, I mixed it with ethanol so that it wouldn't, um, it would have lower surface tension and be able to lift the, the grime away better without as much potential to interact with the surface. I'm working with this uh, Maya sensor 
the smoke would have come out the top here, this cross shaped opening. And it has this rather expressive face with the tongue sticking out. And it was put together once uh, many years ago uh, with um, adhesives that have now given way and uh, with uh, old film materials, some of which have broken. As the old film materials are this uh, yellowy material here. Uh, I've started putting it back together with stable adhesives and uh, the acrylic and glass micro balloon mixture uh, along some of these. And this is plaster. And I'm getting around to putting on some more pieces up the back. This will go on with the uh, acrylic adhesive. Bit of excess, we'll get rid of that. We're to pick it back up again and sort of let the adhesive set a little, make sure we have enough. Then sometimes it's hard to get it back where you want it. <laughs> Continue to fill gaps uh, such as this with plaster and these with the more of the thick and putty material. Yeah, and so we can take the, these glass glass powder and mix it with the adhesive that we use, and it makes a very um, it makes a paste. And sometimes, it, like for the spider monkey sensor, it's very dark. Um, and rather than work with it white, then you can pre-pigment it. So that's what this is. It's dried out now, but it'll reconstitute quickly if you add a little like a little this. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So so you fill the gaps using that material, and then usually, almost always, you have to shape it to match the surface well, so you don't have peaks and valleys or whatnot. And um, rather than get white powder all over the place, as you're shaping, it's nicer to have something that matches the color of the ceramic. Or matches it closely enough so that the painting. Yeah, and the painting the, process the is The touch different. of painting is not as difficult. We often use acrylic paints. They're very handy to work with. They're stable. They're compatible with our film materials and whatnot. Um, I like to work on a, on a wet palette so that the paints don't dry out very quickly, especially in the winter. Um, the atmosphere tends to get dry. So I use this kind of palette. And I lay out the colors that I'm using for whatever project that I have. And there's a, there's a little sponge underneath, so it helps keep everything moist in here and gives me a longer working time with my colors. It's acrylic emulsion. We use gold in here. There's different types. There's the fluid acrylics that come in a bottle like this. Um, these have pretty high tinting strength and low viscosity, so they're nice to work with in some applications. And we like to use Golden um, as a company for a couple reasons, and most importantly because the pigments are stable and the just the general composition of the paints, they have a good um, longevity to keep their color. When you color match something, you're using completely different materials. I mean, acrylic versus ceramic, the acrylic is going to age very differently. And often that aging process includes a color shift, but these paints age very well, so that shift doesn't happen very quickly. It, it takes a very long time, which is good because you don't want to have to go back and retreat something. Um, and another reason is, is Golden as a company uh, is very, they do a lot of work with conservators to test their paints and are very upfront about what's in them. So we know exactly what we're putting on an object. Whereas some other companies have proprietary secrets and you don't really know what's in them and then they change the composition without telling you. So there's, those are two really good reasons. <laughs> um, acrylics also, they tend to be a little bit glossier than some of these matte type of ceramics, and so I add some fumed silica, um, which is just a silica powder that helps with the, it, it acts as a mattening agent so that it's not as glossy when you apply it on the surface, it doesn't reflect the light 